All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Street Angel Podcast with myself, Angelo Thomas. So this week, I was going to introduce you to um, a new friend of mine over in America, the Malibu Medium. Uh, But as luck would have it, (laughs) and is always the case whenever I try to do a live with with anyone spiritual, especially the higher the channel, I mean, she's an amazing Akashic record reader. It's like technology just gets incredibly overwhelmed. I mean, power went out, we couldn't connect. So fingers crossed next week, we will have a chat with the amazing Amber from, as I said, the Malibu Medium. So, you know, this week I was like, bugger, what the heck am I going to talk about? Because normally I like to just plan it one week we're in this week as opposed to one week in advance. I just like to plan it in the week, what we talk about. I um, It's a part of me trying to not get too ahead of myself. And, you know, there's those um, stupid spiritual cliches about, you know, if you worry about tomorrow's problems, you steal today's joy, blah, blah, blah. Like, they give me a toothache. They're that sweet. But while I was sitting here and making up random crystal grids to bring me like riches beyond my dreams and all that stuff. (laughs) I was connecting with my angel guides, um, Maxine and Serene, my, um, my Atlantean guide. I also need to stop saying, um, I realized I heard myself back a few times on this podcast and I say, um, more times than I say anything else. So let's reduce the ums. So I had um, an album playing on the background. I said it again. <laughs> and it was playing over and over and over again. She was singing my favorite cliche, my favorite cliche, my favorite cliche. And I was like, I had to turn it down. Cause I was like, this is ridiculous. This, this word just keeps getting in my head. Then it hit me. I was like, I actually, uh, I did a post a while back and, um, it's something that I teach people, uh, during spiritual development or spirit development, let's call it spirit work development, is around uh, not being a cliche. So uh, let's start with quickly, you know, the spirit jukebox, how I got that message. I'm sure I mentioned it in one of the other podcasts around signs that you can get signs from spirit in many different ways. And one of them is through music. Now, I adore the term the spirit jukebox because it has helped me so much through life i get random songs come on in you know shopping centers and woolies especially woolies ascot they have like i heart radio playing or something some absolute banging tunes and i'll often get messages through them you know i can also wake up in the middle of the night with a song in my head and it'll just be playing everywhere i go you know recently kate bush's running up that hill has been having a a huge impact because of some Netflix show. Like I haven't watched a Netflix show and I'm laughing actually, oh, not now, but I was because everyone's acting like they rediscovered it. But it was something that, you know, my friend and Eddie and I actually heard when we went to America and Mexico back in 2017. It was a spirit jukebox number. Every bar we went to from, I think it was San Francisco to Mexico City, Cabo, back to LA, you know, even uh, down in Brisbane Airport. I'm sure one of them was playing, it was playing that song. So the Spirit Jukebox, I love it. It's not just earworms. You can actually get really good messages from Spirit Jukebox, especially when you go and go and look up the lyrics. So today I was lost, uh, not sure what to talk about. And good old Mandy started singing about her favorite cliche and then it hit me. Let's talk about spiritual cliches. <laughs> and I don't want to talk about it too much in distracting uh, negative speak of like, of focusing on the spiritual cliches, but more so flipping it and saying that, you know, when we do work with spirit, when we communicate with them, live our everyday lives with them, you know, you don't need it to be a cliche to do that. And you know, what is a cliche? Well, a quick example could be that you don't always have to sit cross-legged, back straight, palms facing upwards uh, to receive messages from spirit. I always say that the greatest channeling of spirit comes during the times when we aren't spiritual cliches and we're actually being distracted. Now, a side note here is that the key to spirit work is distraction. 
it's distracting our logical mind, our monkey brain, um, you know, whatever you want to call it. I, um, stop saying, um, <laughs> I even have heard that, you know, when we talk about Atlantean speak and I'll do an Atlantean podcast one day where I can actually channel my Atlantean spirit guide, Serene, I may ta- start talking Atlantean. Don't be getting out your crosses and holy water. I ain't talking in tongues. <laughs> Though they talk about in some circles your reptilian brain, where it's very logical and it's your ego steps in. It's basically where, uh, if you were to think about, you know, the Monday to Friday, nine to five, you know, everything has to have a reason, you know, logical or that. So to talk to spirit, we've got to distract our brains, we've got to distract that part of us. One of the things that I like to actually tell people is that, you know, Here's some examples or stories of how spiritual messages and some really profound spiritual messages have actually come to me from my Yaya and from my Auntie Betty, even from, you know, Edwina's Nan. I remember there was this one story where we were eating dinner at a really, really cool, funky wine bar in Brisbane. It has like Chinese tapas. It's incredibly... Uh, in itself, it was funny actually because it's an actual cliche. <laughs> you know, everyone wants to be seen there. People taking selfies. Like it's got wine shelves to the ceiling. The owners are adorably lovely. However, they're a little bit cliche. So you know, serves good food and wine. So we were sitting there, and out of nowhere, I saw Eddie's nan just sitting to the left of me, up. You know, on the shelves, it reminded me very much of like a Mary Poppins bed knobs and broom style, broom, bed knobs and broomsticks style image. I think if you look at bed knobs and broomsticks, there's a picture of um, Angela Lansbury floating in the library at one point. Anyway, she looked like that. She was sitting up there in the library, and I was like, okay, here we go. <laughs> and I was very distracted at the time because I was hoeing into these dumplings and having an amazing. Uh, I think it was a gamay, a visually gamay. I was the last thing I was thinking about was spirits, but she popped in, and uh, I, t- I said to Eddie, you know, here's the message, and Eddie was like, well, tell me something I don't know. You know, what's a message that I've never told you? So, her nan gave it to her, and spoke about how she used to have these light blue pajamas with ducks on them when she was younger, and they were always too long for her. You know, as part of the other, you know, there were some deeper messages that I gave to her, which are, you know, not comfortable sharing with the public. But one of the messages was, I I didn't know this at the time, but Eddie was really kind of confused or stressed out because she needed new jeans and she hates jean shopping. You know, who likes jean shopping? But one of the funny stories was her nan was saying to her, don't worry about it. You've always had to pull your pants up. You always had to take your pants up because you're short. So (laughs) who cares? And it... It made Eddie have a chuckle and a laugh um, because it was such a out there left a field message about pajamas linking to jeans and she hadn't told me either story. And it just showed that because I was incredibly distracted, some really cool messages came through. Now, some other examples of what I tell people that uh, in the past of where really strong messages have come through for me, doing spirit work while not being a cliche for example, have been, you know, there's been times when in an elevator I used to work in uh, a really tall tower, Mitchell Centre Tower in Darwin, and sometimes it would stop on every single stop. You know, thank God when we had to do social distancing, so only four people were allowed, but, you know, these people would literally squeeze you in like sardines, and I'd be absolutely busting to pee, and I would be distracting myself in my head, you know, don't think about, you know, <laughs> think about warmth, think about drier deserts, you know, distraction, 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 and bam, a message would come through from, from spirit about someone in the elevator, about myself, about what was going to happen in the day. It's um, another example when I'd be, you know, surrounded by basically about 10, 20 people in a very boring muggle meeting talking about things that you just know are never going to get off the ground because everyone's too busy making themselves seem important there's no actual delivery you know there's another um pot shot that i've just taken in at the public service (laughs) 
But it was in those meetings where I was completely distracted because I was trying to get everyone back on topic and talk about what can we actually do. That, you know, I would get messages from the Arcturians, messages from the angels. And, you know, people say to me, isn't that invasive? You know, oh, your protection's not up. Oh, you're, um, it's another word. You need to close yourself down. Or well, bollocks. Those were messages from my guides. They weren't messages from random spirits. They were messages from my guides. And sure, other random spirits do come in and help. But I'm not going to shut them off continuously because they could help me. You know, they could help someone else. So a lot of the time it is my guides. Another way in which messages come to you, you know, doing very mundane things everyday things is actually when you're cooking up a storm in the kitchen and especially when you have like pop or rock music or even headbanging throat music in the background you know when you're distracted thinking about should i have this much pasta should i not you know what's um what's the correct measurements to make a roux um you know is them is this cooked is that overcooked and then you go oh my god there's a really good tune in the background you know and they're absolutely, you know, Johnny Cash is belting out another one. All of a sudden, there's been many times in my life where my Annie Betty or my Yaya will just step in and talk to me. It's hilarious because I have a saying that I don't measure my food. I don't, as in like when I cook, it's not like I, you know, just give myself gluttonous amounts of food. But it's more I don't measure per se what a cup is. I don't measure what uh, a tablespoon is. I kind of... You know, the saying is, stop pouring until your ancestors tell you to stop. Um, you know, stop, you know, you know it's cooked when your ancestors tell you when you know it's to cook. Because that's kind of like what I, how I cook. I just cook intuitively. And it's distraction. I also tell people about the cliches when you're doing spirit work. Don't worry about having to be in certain settings all the time. Sure, when you're doing really in deep spirit work, when you're doing really, um, what's the word for it here? ritualistic or intense where you don't want to be distracted by everyday people you want to have a little bit of focus for sure find a safe sacred place you know find your study find your bedroom i also well actually don't find your bedroom don't do spirit work in your bedroom that's not a that's a, that's a real no-no find a um a space under a tree you know especially those types of things where you want to at first meet your guides or meet your dragon etc but back to point you can still get messages from your guides and from spirit you know sitting in a public place like sitting sipping champagne on a rooftop bar or you know even walking down the driveway to collect rubbish bins at night it's like and, and I mean my driveway is a bit of a communal one because I live in a, in a townhouse and you know, I'm always bound to bump into someone and say good day. <laughs> but the thing is, when I'm walking down there, I'm distracted because I'm like, is it recycling tonight or was it last week? I never know. Like, I honestly never know. And no matter how many times I mark it on the calendar, I'll lose said calendar. That's my little distraction point, And bam, those spirits come in and they start talking to me. Now, the, I personally feel the reason why this works, why we get really cool messages uh, around our life our everyday life from our spirits guides from our spirits and spirit guides like our passover loved ones is because we are in that moment living in balance we're going with the flow and we've given trust over to the fact that the doorway to the unseen realms you know where spirit resides is always open in front of us can always access us and we can also access it no matter what we're doing you know spirit has a really 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 big rule oh they don't have too many rules but one of their main rule is is to come as you are so if you are to come as you are and you are you know yeah you're a public servant sitting in a meeting and you love doing that work you're going to get inspiration for that work when you're distracted get into the nitty-gritty of a project plan if you love sitting in a champagne bar you know i think it's a rooftop bar i've written down here Either way, either one, who cares? You know, if you love going out and having fun with your friends and spirit guides send you little messages through that because you're distracted, you're having a really good chat to your friend about something, hey, you might even get inspired to do a joint project with them or to go on a trip. Something that makes your heart sing. 
who cares if that's how you got the message? It's the fact that you're not being a spiritual cliche. You're not saying that you have to sit and, you know, dress in cheesecloth dresses, be dripping in crystals, waving feathers and smudge sticks everywhere or, or quoting, um, you know, those corny self-help mantra memes. Um, what's the other one that I love to say to people? Oh, yeah, you don't have to even walk around with a song bowl. <clears throat> <laughs> and constantly chant. I just like choked myself then because I was eating cashews before. You don't have to do all those things to communicate with spirit. You just need to be you and live your everyday life. Be distracted. Don't be the cliche. Come as you are and spirit will come as they are. You know, I have met some of the most flamboyant, boring, outgoing, introverted, loud, crazy, normal, down to earth, snooty snobby people from all different walks of life who are the most powerful channels mediums psychics call them what you want like you know let's just say they're the most powerful people that speak to spirit who do everyday things you know they're like doctors they're nurses they're lawyers they're real estate agents they're grocery shop attendants they're bar people uh, bar attendants they're garbage shop drivers they are them and spirit talks to them crystally clear. They give them inspiration. They give them advice. They give them the nudge. They use the power of distraction, not being cliche, to live a really intuitive spirit-led life. On the flip side, without focusing on the negative, <laughs> I've met some incredibly cliched folk who, bless their hearts, love to do it all. You know, you Google the New Age spiritual world and I guarantee you're, you're going to find a picture of them. But they couldn't see, see, hear, experience, feel a spirit or the spirit guide if it bit them on the ass. And I tell you what, sometimes spirit guides do do that. Not the actual biting on your bum, that's a bit kinky. But they do do things. Like, they will poke you. I have been poked many a times by my spirit guides when I'm not paying attention. And, you know, it's like a... How far do you have to distract yourself and pay attention? But I guess in my line of work where I'm actually actively working with spirit each and every day, I do have to, yeah, be distracted. But when the spirit guides come in with their messages, listen up. You know, they're not going to poke you guys if you're not doing spirit work every day. Don't live your life thinking that all of a sudden you're just going to get poked. <laughs> it reminds me of that old Facebook thing where people would poke you and you poked back. I'm like, what the hell is this? Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. Yeah, these people who are cliches, they just, you know, one hand they're not hurting anyone, so leave them be. It's like that saying, live and let live. Fantastic. But on the other hand, when they're taking money from people and they're filling your head with, with real anxiety-inducing words and jumbles, like telling you that you have to go out and, as I said, meditate for an hour each day. You have to have an amethyst because that's what helps open your crown chakra to receive messages from your spirit guides. Now, I've never used an amethyst for that. I love my crystals and I will do a podcast on crystals using them for grids and assisting you. But you know, you don't need that. You just need to come as you are because spirit sees all. And you know, if they can see you sneaking the extra fries at lunch or the extra glass of wine, lying to your significant other about whether or not that dress is brand new, <laughs> you know, in so many readings that I've done, spirit guides will t and pass over loved ones will tell me things that, you know, the client or the sitter will turn and go, how the hell do you know that? Well, let me tell you this. If Nana Bertha, your grandma Beryl, whatever, who out there <laughs> can see that, then she can also see through the absolute mask or cliche, uh, whatever you want to call it, whatever act you're putting on. She can see who you really are and she will respect you a hell of a lot more if you just come to her as you are. You know, light a candle, cook some spaghetti bolognese, put your favorite music on, you know, say if that's what she used to cook for you, it could be another dish like a peach trifle, whatever. You know, just distract yourself in the moment of thinking about her, getting into the recipe, listening to the song. And I guarantee you, at the very least, she, her presence will be felt, you know, or to the more extreme, you'll get a message from her, you'll, you'll get something from her, a sign from her. 
you know, and don't overthink it. Don't, you know, go in without expectations of hearing trumpets and all that. It could literally just be that you, her presence could be known intuitively that, oh crap, I forgot the, um, the secret ingredient she puts in a bag bowl or I forgot to put the cognac in the peach trifle. Never forget to put the cognac in the peach trifle, guys. But um, it could also be something where you forget to put a timer on when you put something in the oven and she tells you, check that oven. You jump up, you check the oven. Oh, that not that lucky? That's just her having a chat to you. That's how spirit loves to come through. They themselves also don't want to be a cliche. You know, they don't want to have the trumpets from the sky, the what they call about the bold birds where all of them are being defeathered and it's literally like in your living room having this hurricane of feathers you know it's really incredibly rare and difficult for a spirit to apparate and appear physically in front of you so when you get these signs and these images or these messages from spirit through your distractions and not being a cliche in turn respect them and understand that they also won't be a cliche they will help you turn off the oven before it's too late they will help you with an ingredient they will help you in some way you know could even be you've got a particular meeting that you're stressed about tomorrow they may give you a little epiphany from the, the thoughts of well this meeting ain't gonna be no one's gonna fix anything in the meeting so just go in do your best or here's an idea you can put to everyone you know, when we sum it up, we don't have to be a cliche to work with spirit. We just need to come as we are. We, you know, be distracted in our everyday work, trust that balance, trust that flow. And in turn, spirit will respect and reward us by also coming as they are and not being a cliche also. It's that really perfect balance between us and spirit world. You know, we can do many other activities and tools that I do teach people to communicate with spirit. And if anyone out there wishes to learn how to do this work, I do offer these development sessions as opposed to readings. Now, if we do that, we actually will live a more intuitive spirit led life. Um, I remember there was a, a chat between me and my mentor, Miss Fee. He's an incredibly powerful medium. And she kept yelling at me and yelling at me to meet them in the middle, to just meet spirit in the middle. I then had to play that song, <laughs> Won't You Meet Me Halfway, to remind myself sometimes, yeah, meet spirit in the middle. If you get distracted, if you just come as you are, if you just be you and not try to be someone else, they'll also just be them and try not to be too tricky or to be too elusive. You know, it's a meeting in the middle. It's, it's the balance and it works. Trust me. So... I was going to leave it there, but then I just got a knock on my head <laughs> from my yaya, who she's so cute. When she was alive, I didn't, I've only met her once in person when I went and stayed in Greece for a bit. She used to call me a thieving Turk in the middle of the night. I'm sure it was just to, uh, <laughs> to get me used to being woken up all the time by spirit, you know, it's a uh, crazy yaya throwing stuff at you. It was fun though. Five minutes later, we were good friends. <laughs> but she always loves to, to butt in. And she's just reminding me now. She's also saying hey to dad. So if dad's listening, hey dad. The, um, the story of when we were living in Darwin and we, I think it was like dry season. So it could also possibly be around this time. It actually was around this time. Yeah, it was in July. Yeah. Sorry, she's just nodding at me like I'm an idiot. Or she say Blaka. Um, <laughs> and she's... I remember we were having a, a pool party. We were having just a gathering, a barbecue. Heap of friends were coming over. Eddie was in the kitchen uh, making drinks. I was walking backwards and forwards from the garage to the pool because for some reason I lost those pool noodle things. I think Baron at the time actually ate them. We were in the midst of getting ready. And, you know, it might have been Darwin and everything's cash, but it's still, you still got to get ready. So that way when people come, you can just sit and chill. Or as my friend Lindsay used to say, just have a drink, sit and relax in her Yorkshire accent. So out of nowhere, my yaya was in front of me. Now, again, it wasn't cliche. She wasn't standing physically in front of me. She has done that in the past, but she didn't do it today or that day. 
it was like this sense of that she was just there and instantly in my head I was like yeah yeah <laughs> I heard this word I never heard like and she turned to me and said congratulate Edwina on her new job and I just turned to Eddie and I said hey congratulations on your new job she was like what the hell are you talking about I have no idea what you're talking about. I haven't applied for a new job I said no you're gonna get offered a new job next week but also Yaya's talking to me and telling me that I think we're actually going to move to Brisbane because you're going to get an even better job. She just laughed it off, thought I might have been drinking a bit early. It was 10 or 11 a.m. I wasn't. <laughs> but come that following Monday, Edwina called me up and she said to me, you have to be kidding me. You are, you know, she got a call from a different agency offering her a job. It was a short secondment. And I said, take it go for it. But in the meantime, keep your eye out for another job. And lo and behold, that week there was a job then advertised for Brisbane. Now, I tried to not put her off her game, but I kept saying to her, we're going to get, you're going to get this job. We're going to move to Brisbane. And lo and behold, it was around June, yeah, July, she applied. I think it was August, September, we found out it was yes. And by end of October, early November, we were in Brisbane. It all came, all that, that life shifting change and that, that powerful message from Yaya simply came because I was distracted thinking about whether or not my then German Shepherd was eating the pool noodles and where the hell was he pooping them out? <laughs> I was so distracted with that. You know, it all came from those moments where we were distracted. You know, music was playing, drinks were getting ready, food was getting ready, people were messaging. I was incredibly distracted, not thinking of anything spiritual and Yaya came in. She just said, Sevkarastol, thank you for telling her. Oh, she's very bossy today. <laughs> but the point of that story is, again, is to just wrap up and illustrate that you don't need to sit every day for an hour and wait for spirit. Spirit also isn't sitting and waiting for you. They've got better things to do. They don't, they're not always trying to give you a message all the time. But there are those moments where we intersect and through the power of distraction, spirit's able to get through to us. And it's pretty much, you know, the core basic idea of how we chat to spirit. We just drop the act and come as we are. So if anyone out there would love to work with spirit, even love to just work with their spirit guides or the energies around them for them simple selves, you know, live an intuitive led life like those people that I listed before. Give me a hoy, give me an email, let me know. I've got a, a booking option where, you know, we just have a free 15 minute chat and you know me, I could talk underwater with a mouthful of marbles. So the 15 minutes normally goes to 30. We, we say, we, you know, we get to know each other. We talk around, you know, what would you like to do with spirit? How would you like to work with spirit? And then we decide whether or not we work with each other. It's a, it's a pretty cool journey I'd say is a word or journey or path that we do together because there are heaps of aha moments and penny drop moments which don't come from some amazing Atlantean secret or some you know quantum abundance bollocks crap uh, code or something that I've cracked with da Vinci it comes from very simple practices such as this to not be a cliche to drop the spiritual crap to come to spirit as you are and to just be you. Trust that, trust whatever message big and small and then we build on that together. So, I think that's enough from me. Yaya's definitely good, she's walked away. <laughs> but if you are interested, give me a chat. Hopefully next week we'll have Miss Amber from the Malibu Medium. We haven't quite discussed what we'll talk about, but it's just, you know, talk when spirit lets us talk and remember to follow me on instagram at the dot angelo thomas i put on my bio uh the information where i won't message you out of the blue for readings i won't solicit anything from you so that way hopefully it stops those scammy moles you can also follow me on facebook or subscribe to this podcast to make sure that you don't miss out on any future episodes on all various podcast channels like i said i'm now on google and have a great day i'm actually off to the city to do some shopping and have some lunch. I'm really hoping that this Japanese ramen place is open that I love. So hopefully it will be a good day. Thanks guys.